Demofitis, good morning to you all. Uh, we're here to give you guys another juicy topic. Um, you know, before we get started in today's podcast, though, guys, look, smash the like button. It's free. We don't ask you guys for much. You guys say you love the content. Smash that like button. Share the videos. Follow us on any platform that you feel comfortable. We provide the platforms. You guys go and, you know, share and like the work because, again, it's every single message, comment, text message is literally the thing that, I, I don't know, makes us want to keep doing what we're doing. Mm, absolutely, right? Absolutely. It's so nice when you've got the support behind you of doing what you're doing. So it's not much to hit the like button and give it a little share. Thank you so much. We really appreciate it. Really, really appreciate it. So, yes. Yeah, guys, we're trying to get to at least a thousand subscribers. So help us on our journey. Um, you're also going to see more posts from us um, on YouTube um, three times a week. So we're going to really be upping the engagement hugely um, to connect with you guys because three times a week, eh, we want to see you guys more. And hopefully you want to see <laughs> us more. Um so with that being said, we're going to get into today's topic shortly. I'm going to play the promo video and then we're going to get into today's topic. All right. Now, before we get started, I want to, I'm always going to make this clear at every video when we have certain topics or we talk about certain things we're not talking about all women we're not talking about all men it might what? sound like it but we're not and if you get like triggered or you get like or you feel some type of way you need to step away from the podcast go reflect and come back um because again we're 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 here to bring people together that's the goal of the podcast it's not to keep each other separate but it's to acknowledge that there's certain truths on certain sides on men and on women that are keeping us apart instead of us being together which is the ultimate goal absolutely um and another thing is is i want you guys to understand that we're not perfect either <laughs> i need you guys to understand that though because when you when some people watch the, the the content creators or or podcasters or people that do what we do you know yes we have certain messages and we really do try to live by what we preach but we're not perfect no. like that's the thing we're not perfect so like when people are like oh like you did this or you're not fuck we're trying to 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 implement these rules in our lives at a higher capacity to get the relationships even that we want. Yeah. And actually it's made a huge difference in our, we might not be in actual relationships. However, um, our relationships in general, I must say have really seriously improved because of what we implement in. So we have great relationships, with business partners, with friendships, with family members, um, everything, you know, and that's because we are, what we speak about, we do, like Michael just said, we implement it in our life too. But we try. Um, like that, yeah. That's the and thing, we really do try. Yeah, and no one is perfect. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter how much you know, there's, you know, mistakes do happen and you do do things that actually, and actually the, the funny thing is, Michael, it's that you might do something that you actually think is okay and then somebody else doesn't see it like that. But that's not that's not because it's wrong on your side. It's just because that's their perspective on things. So it's a balance again. So if it's somebody you're in a romantic relationship with and they don't like what you've just done, then you're going to find your middle ground behind it. Um, but if it's somebody you don't really have, really care, like whether you see them or you don't see them again, you might not really take much notice or you might take it on board, but you're not willing to implement changes because they don't, it's not, they're not enough in your life for you to have to do that, to satisfy them in any way, if that makes sense. Well, it's all about finding your middle ground. And I love that you yeah. said that because, again, guys, like, I'm, I'm not perfect. Me, I get frustrated, man, when people don't listen to me. Like, like, as a man, it's very hard sometimes to speak and be heard because a lot of times, even in the romantic context, like, a lot of times, and again, it's no shade towards women, 
women get all the time to say whatever they want. And when a man says what he wants, it's like, no, I don't care. Mm. Like it's literally just pushed aside. No, you're going to focus on what I want you to like. A women will say, I want you to focus on what I want. And then however you feel is discriminished. Mm. But it's like, okay, so you picked me, I picked you, but clearly only your opinion matters and not mine. But I think, again, that sits in categories that we've spoken about before, Michael, where that's not the right person for you because the right person and the par and the partner that finds that middle ground and works alongside you and does listen to you will, um, will take that time and hear you and you will hear them. Um, again, so I think that's kind of like a red flag if somebody's not listening and a woman, let's say in your case, as a woman who is just wanting to have her say, but when it comes down to you, they're not wanting to hear you, then that's not the right person for you. Because I believe that the a good relationship is ease and flow. There's no, there's no um, pushing it into place or having to really try and work things out. I think it's really... I've seen it so many times where people just come together and it just works. They don't have to try and say, oh, I've got to speak or I've got to, or this one's got to do this or this one's got to do that. They just merge together and become like a, like one. And actually it's like an ebb and flow between them. And I'm not saying that's like a hundred percent of the time, but most of the time that's how it is when you're in the right relationship is what so you I've said something yeah. You said something interesting, which I want to cover on before we jump into today's topic. It's about, as you said, ebony and flow, but it's more of a sense as you said, something of hearing. It's like so someone could say I'm listening, but are you hearing, hearing. what I'm telling you? Mm. Like, there's a big difference. Like, if I speak, you can hear me, but are you listening to the words mm. of like, okay, maybe you hurt me, maybe you did this, maybe you did that, and then you're able to extract that information out and say, okay, maybe I did hurt this person. Maybe I did do this. Maybe, like, again, and again, it's no shade towards women. Little jabs of, um, of insults towards men, it hurts. Of course. It but men hurts. won't they won't they won't show that all the time. They will just get on with it or blank it out. And then yeah. the and then the behavior shows that it hurt them later on rather than in that moment. Mm. And that's the thing that you need to understand, ladies. Those cool, cute little jabs that you think are cute, they're not cute, they're hurtful. And if that person's supposed to be your king, why would you make jabs like that? No, you wouldn't. Bear with me and shut the window. No, no, go, go right ahead. Um, that's something that we wanted to cover on quickly is if he's your king or someone that you respect, you wouldn't make those, those, those little jokes. No, you wouldn't. Now, this is, this is what I'm, I think this is where it becomes a better relationship or you do when you've got the right partner and the right person for you. These things don't, they, they don't come around like that, you know? I think those kind of experiences is when, <laughs> you're trying to find your way with somebody but actually eventually it, it doesn't work because there's too much trying to push it in the right direction or having to give what you think and what they think and like I said I think that when you're in a good relationship that works that is that is meant for both of you that is at the right time the right place everything is right for that for you two to be together then it it just works it's a, it's a feeling of homecoming, like we said in our podcast yeah. the other day. It's that homecoming feeling. It like, doesn't mean it's perfect. No, it because works. like, no, like we said just now, we're not perfect. So we can't, our relationship's never going to be perfect because we're not perfect. And like we said in our podcast of homecoming, like somebody that's a homecoming feeling, it's a reflection of you. So that reflection if you've got that self-love and you've got that self-respect and you've got all of the goodness from you and that person is reflecting that then you're gonna just like you would get frustrated with yourself with certain situations there's gonna be certain things with your partner you're gonna get frustrated with but it's not gonna happen that often because because in general you're quite happy go lucky and you get on with your stuff you're building your businesses you're interacting with people you have you've got good relationships going on and everything is just coming together so 
you won't have like major issues that's going to make you feel that for the rest of your day that is playing on your mind or you know mm. why didn't this get said or why are they doing this or all those kind of things don't really happen that often that's true and, and that's what i mean what i'm about to say next is going to bridge in today's topic ladies you have to stop thinking love is perfect the, the watching the Disney movies and the, and the TV shows and being in love with love, it's not perfect. You think your Prince Charming is going to be like um, Aladdin and he's going to come in on a carpet and everything's going to be amazing. Doesn't work like that. You you think your Prince Charming is going to be the guy from, from, from Twilight. He's going to protect you from everything and do all this stuff. No. Movies and R&B songs only show the good side. So then they give you the narrative of that's how it's supposed to be. Like that all the time. And it's not. It's a nice fantasy, but it's not mm. reality. It doesn't mean that you can't like be loving on your girlfriend, affectionate, caring, all those things. But to use the R&B movie uh, music or movies as a template for romance is you're setting yourself up for disaster because now when you meet people, you're going to think, well, it's supposed to be all wonderful and magical and, you know, a, a sugar plum fairy is going to come with the wand. And no, no, it is not. I personally like to say love is messy, but can you turn that mess into a message? of two of you building something together. With the foundation of love. Yeah, exactly. Or with the foundation of respect, which we Yeah, love. you know what? You're very right about to say. <laughs> uh, you know what? Yes, yes. The foundation of uh, respect that leads to love. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And I think so many people, Michael, are missing that respect, aren't they? But that's um, the thing. If we're going to talk about it a little bit, because again, we will get into mental weddings. What you deem as disrespectful, I might not deem as disrespectful. So it's about finding that common ground. Absolutely. It really is. Um, because again, I'm going to say a truth right here, right now, which is going to help you guys understand um, some things. When I get frustrated, I want to move away from the situation. I want to. Because I, I don't want to say or do or behave in a manner that's not me. Right. I've made mistakes where I've literally just hung up the phone on the person. Because I don't want to stay in that space. I want to cool off. I want to go away. But if they don't let me go away and I know that they're like, no, we're going we're gonna to stay, work it out. Which I believe you should. But it's like, I'm going to move away because I'm frustrated. I can't stay there. Because yeah. nothing's being resolved. It's just chit-chatter, chit-chatter. He said, she said, chit-chatter, chit-chatter. And I can't do it. And I've made the mistake of hanging up on someone. And I understand why that would be disrespectful, especially if it's someone from you love or care about. But also understand their point of view of they need a minute to gather their thoughts. Yeah. And I think that's the, I think that's the best thing anyone can do. Um, I really think the best thing anyone can do is step away. And if that means putting down the phone, it means putting down the phone. And I don't think that's a bad thing because actually in the long run, you've done the best thing because you could have stayed on the phone and actually mm. reacted in a way that could actually be detrimental to the relationship. And ruin it. Like, and ruin it. But by putting the phone down, you're not hurting anybody. There's no physical, there's nothing physically being said. Mm. No one's physically getting hurt, mentally getting, no one's mentally taking any like hurtful words on board. So actually, if there's a choice to either put down the phone or express in that moment words that you don't, you're going to regret, I would rather put down the phone and I'd rather my man put down the phone. I think that would, okay. that would actually be better situation. So let me ask you this before we get into today's topic. If your man hung up on you, would you be offended, but caveat, but if he called you back to work it out, would you be okay with it? Oh, of course I'd be okay with it. Absolutely. So if he hung up on you because it was getting too much. Absolutely. Absolutely. I don't have a problem with it. Back, as long as he called me back to say, listen, I needed a minute. I would say, and I've, it's happened. I mean, I, I'm mm -hmm. saying it, 
but it's actually happened. And I don't mm-hmm. have a problem with that. So even if he called you back, like within an hour, like he hung up on yeah. you, but he called you back and said, look, babe, like, yo, that, that was getting too much. I, I, I needed to move from the situation. Back in the day, let's say like, well, I'm saying like 10 odd years ago, I would have absolutely gone like, how dare he put the phone down and tried to call him back and tried mm. to continue. But that was the past of my, like, more this side of life. Mm. There's no, like, I've already had that situation on, like, in my, uh, how do you say, it's not my past, it's still my past, but not that far back. In, yeah, it's not in your present, like, correct. No, yeah, yeah, so, and um, I've actually respected that because where before I would have got irate that the fact that someone put the phone down on me, now I don't, I'm more like, no, I get that and I respect that because I know that had we stayed on the phone, it could have gone in the really wrong direction. So I'd much prefer someone put the phone down and me just say, okay, at first, you're always going to be like, what? They just put the phone down on me. That's going to be a natural reaction. Absolutely. You're like, oh, my goodness. However, you've got to take that minute, too, and understand why was the phone put down on you? Mm. I think and the thing is, both ways. did he come back? That's yeah, the thing. Absolutely. Because yeah. if he didn't care, he would, then be, he wouldn't he would come dead back. it. He would just yeah. dead it. He would be like, no, like, he would just dead it. But the fact that he came back and understand, yo, maybe I was a little reactive. Maybe yeah. I was a little this and that. The reactive um, mind, isn't it? It takes over and you want to, um, but putting the phone down means that you've got control of your reactive mind and you're actually taking that time and it shows your growth and who you are and what you're about. I, like I would it. much rather somebody take that time than somebody react in that moment. Because someone reacting there and then shows me that you've got some healing stills doing some growing within yourself. Like, what, what do you mean? Like if they've reacted in that way? If they've react if they've reacted um in a way where they've stuck around and they've this verbally now they're just going in because they don't know how to put the phone down they don't or they don't want to put the phone down and they're just like they want to say what they want to say rather than taking that time out the person who wants to say what they want to say is actually a person that still needs to heal still mm. needs to take time out to learn because like i ever said to my own children one thing in life never react to anybody always take your time always stand back and take a minute so you can emotional can... intelligence yeah it has to be otherwise you're just going to end up in in horrible situations and i'm not just speaking about romantically i mean in any situation like, yeah, oh, yeah. try to yeah. be like, level-headed and stuff yeah 100%. yeah um, and then, look guys i know we went a little left but you know we had we had to talk about it because again um you know we live this stuff just like you guys have um so what we're going to talk about next and i'm echoing a little bit on your side anthea um but um what we're going to talk about next um is this mental weddings and you guys are probably like well what's that um mental weddings are pretty much when you create a story in your mind where you're painting this person in a perfect light, but it's not the reality you're living in. So, it's, a, it's a big expectation, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. You, well, you know what? It's like you're living in your own head. Hmm. Um, you know what I mean? Because in this perfect reality, you've painted a picture of like where everything's perfect and it's wonderful, but in reality, it's really not. Yeah. And we want to try to help you today get over mental weddings because, again, when you're in this space of mental weddings, you actually ignore a lot of red flags, <laughs> bad behavior, um, and multiple things. And that's what sometimes keeps you in a relationship longer than you should be, especially mm-hmm. females. I know it sounds like we're directing it, but I've seen a lot of women stay in relationships longer than they should have. I've seen even a lot of men do it. And it's like, you're like, oh, but I love her. I care about her. But like you can tell her behavior is not reflecting that. Her attitude's not reflecting that. She stopped being feminine. She stopped being submissive. Um, she stopped all those things. But because you've held on to an image of what you've painted in your head, you're more in love with the image instead of the reality. 
Yeah, and that is something that um, holds people back big time because they do have that mental image and they do think, well, they see it a certain way mentally. Um, in their mind's eye, they've got this picture and they think, well, he will live up to that and it will become mm. that. But again, I think we've done the podcast on trying to change someone. And I think that fits into the same category. Like having a mental uh, wedding is you trying to think or believe to yourself that they're going to be who you want them to be, but they are who they are. So if they're treating you with disrespect, yes, you can have that hope and yes, you can appreciate the stuff about them that is not like that you could love about them and you can focus on those good things and but at the same time if somebody is that person and they're quite disrespectful they're quite um what's the word like you speak and they dismiss it they over talk you yeah yeah they're dismissive or they just don't have time for you they're just not you know they don't care about what you want what you do then Yes, you can focus on the things that uh, you can appreciate about them and hope that that side of them comes out. However, they're showing you who they are. So believe who they are. Well, and we're also going to help women today, too. Sorry to cut you off. The mental wedding for women is you love this man, you, but you've painted a picture in your mind of like, oh, he's going to love me one day if I do this, 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 and this. Mm. He's going to show up for me. He's going to do all of these things. I just need to wait. Mm. But he's the, but in reality, he's not doing any of those things. So you've fallen in love with a false narrative of, and, and you've pretty much what you've done is you've created a version of this person in your mind of Doesn't how they case. want them to be instead of looking at who, who they are, like as Anthea said, instead of looking at the reality because the reality scares you. Because if you have to look at the reality, it means you have that to that move. person is not matching like what you've created in your mind, you break your own heart doing that. I've heard women say like, oh, he doesn't do this and he doesn't do that. And I've asked him to, to be like this. And why doesn't he just do that that I've asked him to do? Why is it this? And it's always why, 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 why? Why are you with him? I would, uh, yeah, I would say that. You know, there's all those whys and you're constantly going on about why this and why that. Well, why are you entertaining that and being there and complaining about that, continuously complaining, spending your lifetime complaining about your husband or your boyfriend? For what? For what are you gaining out of that? It's and I think because of the mental wedding. But go yeah, on. because of that mental wedding, as you said, it's like they've got this picture and they think that it's going to match at some point. But when this happens, I think, you know, they'll say something like, oh, when the kids get up, get older, then it will be better because it will just be me and him and it will be easier. Um, no. I I'm going to share something with you guys that's really powerful, actually. When you create a mental wedding of somebody in your mind, right? Let's say, for example, we we'll use a woman. She creates a mental version of this guy, loving her, affectionate with her, reciprocating, all those things, right? Wanting to protect her. But in reality, he doesn't do any of those things. What happens is, is you end up breaking your own heart because he's never going to match that vision. He's never shown that he's wanted to match that vision. You see, the thing is, when you care or love about someone, you're willing to adapt can I just say, unless you're, unless you are the woman or even the man is threatening to kick them out, yeah. then they will That's change it. for one week or maybe two weeks or three mm. weeks and they will show you what they want. What, yeah. And then once they're comfortable, then they go back to being them because they can't change who they are. Oh, a hundred percent. If you, if you really love somebody, like I'm talking like genuinely love somebody, you are willing to be what they need to a degree without compromising yourself. I don't know, you know Michael, because I think if somebody's not giving that, if somebody's not that way, and mm. that's just not who they are and they're not yeah. the person that's that loving way or they don't you know they don't do they don't like the things that you like or they're not into yeah, anything yeah. then i think 
by somebody changing to be that way is actually detrimental to self because now mm. you're being somebody forced to make someone else smile so you're not being mm. you you're actually putting a um a fake mask on just so that you can have peace in some way when you're not actually not happy deep down you're not because if you was truly wanting to be with that woman or that man you would have done that from the beginning and you would have you would have been able to work forward from there but if you're going on the line if they've never been like that they're never going to be mm. like that and you can't ask someone to be like that there's a bit of echoing going on isn't there a little bit but well yeah we're okay see i'm gonna word it like this though and I, and I do see what you're saying what i mean by that is for example let's say you're dating somebody and they say babe we need to do more date nights you're gladly willing to change in that narrative to do hmm. more date nights. Okay, that's an outside yeah, thing. That's what I'm saying. Like you're willing to change or adapt to do more date nights. Hmm. You know, or she says like, babe, like, you know, like, can we do something a little different? You're willing to be more adaptable in that space. Hmm. But if you're naturally, like, as you said, in your scenario, which is completely different, if they were never like that from the jump, and you're trying to change them because of a mental picture that you've traded, that's completely different. That's an yeah. L on your part. Mm, absolutely. There's so many people that live that, Michael. So many people that live that. Yeah, because they just want them to change and they don't change it because they want them to do these things or them, you know, but the right person, like you rightfully said, will do that. The person who naturally wants to be with you and naturally does love you, like, as in, yeah. they don't, they can't, they're not willing to live life without you. So they w actually want that, they want that connection between you. They want yeah, to they will grow. adapt to some or adhere to, to, something. Some, to something, you know what I yeah. mean? Yeah, yeah. They genuinely love somebody. But a lot of times, as I said, for me personally, I also got to look at it like this too. And I, and I say this personally, and I know sometimes it's a little strong, but when it comes to your rules, boundaries, it's either comply or go by. Mm. That, that's my mindset. And that, for me, helps me get over the mental wedding so I'm not stuck in this fantasy. So if I, let's say, like, you meet someone, you like them, you guys get on, right? See, I'm starting to take on Anthea's language, starting to get on. <laughs> um, <laughs> Because um, we talk so much. I'm like, yeah, we're starting to get on. Um, and then let's say like you guys are dating with purpose and you're starting to like plan each other's lives together or whatever you're starting to do. Um, you need to understand your boundaries and your standards, right? Those are the base foundations. So at the end of the day, it's like, yo, either comply or goodbye, man. Like, like let's say you're saying, well, I don't like yelling. It's either comply or goodbye. If you want to yell, you can yell by yourself. Because that, that's something I'm not budging on. And you see, in your mental wedding, you might be like, oh, they're perfect. You know, they're never going to yell at me or whatever. But then in reality, they're yelling at you. Mm. And they might do it once and you have to, and you say, look, I just don't do yelling, honestly. Well, no, at that have point, a... it's comply or goodbye. Oh, goodbye. Absolutely. I told you yelling is a no for me. Mm -hmm. Comply. Well, goodbye. And it goes mm -hmm. both ways. It's a double-edged sword because it could be the same thing for the man, for something that he stands on. At the end of the day, it's comply or goodbye. And that's how you get over that mental wedding because mental weddings only hurt you. Yep. There's only you that's holding it. Mm. Yeah, exactly. You're the only person holding it. You're the only person holding and painting the person in this light in a fantasy where they're not even that. Mm -hmm. And I, and I've did and look, man, I'm not gonna lie to you guys. I've been involved with somebody where I was like that. I painted them in a picture where I was like, where I wanted them to be one way. And they worried a little bit, but then it's like, I was more in love with the, with the react, with the reality. Yeah, I, yeah. Like, you know, like, like if you guys have ever seen Avengers, I was more in love with the re with the uh, fantasy than the reality. The reality mm. is she just wasn't like that fully. Mm. And, and it is what it is. And it's either at that point, it's either you stay or you exit off the highway. Those are your mm. options. Mm. And I, I, I think like, <laughs> it, it, 
you really do have to be so on point with who you're choosing to be in your world because it makes a huge difference to every part of you. It does. Like, and I, like in life in general, like your well being, your mental state, your emotional state, you've got somebody who is bringing you down and, and you've got this mental thing going on. You see it, you see it, but in reality, like Michael was saying, has my internet gone a bit funny? No, no, you're good. Keep going. Okay, cool. <clears throat> as yeah, as you were saying, um, oh, man, I just lost where I was going with that. Um, being in love with the reality, being yes. in love with the fantasies of the reality. Right. So, yeah. So if you're being in love with the fantasy side and not and you're and you're and the reality is showing you completely different, it's like you are only hurting you, and that's gonna that's gonna. Um, that's going to bounce off everywhere else in your life. It's not just going to be in that relationship. It's going to it's going to affect other relationships because you're showing up different. Your energy is different. Your thought process is different because you're having to think about these things all the time, right? But mm -hmm. when you're with somebody who matches you and you can you can ride that river of life together, let's say, then they're gonna there's certain things that you'd like them to do like he said take them out take me out to dinner then you can have that mental image and imagine yourself all going out, to, yeah. going out to dinner together that's nice because everything else is falling into place so it's all happy days right um but actually having this whole mental wedding going on and and but then your reality is showing you so different you must take notice of your reality in that sense like, I'll give you an example. Like, for a female, let's say you're dealing with a guy and you're in a situation ship and, uh, you know, he, you want commitment from him, but he's only having bedroom fun with you. You've created a mental wedding in your mind where he's committed to you. But the reality is he's not. He's only yeah. there for the bedroom fun. But you've created a reality in your mind where you're like, oh, if he was to ask me to marry him, I'll run away with him and blah, blah, blah. But the reality is, he, ha he hasn't given you no commitment. So that's what I'm talking about, the mental wedding. Same thing with a man. Let's say you're a man. You've created this fantasy where this girl's, you know, telling you how much amazing you are. You know, she's building you up. She's gaslighting you. She's telling you that you're her king. She's putting you in amazing spaces. But the reality is, is she does zero of that. She tells you you're a nice guy. You're great. And that's it. But... You've fallen more in love with the Im with the with the uh, Idea. fantasy instead of the reality. Now, this is where it actually gets dangerous, actually, especially in the dating realm. What you try to do is you'll try to take the fantasy and try to project it into reality. So you'll try to push it onto that person. And that's when it becomes dangerous because then they're gonna give you pushback. Because you're trying to push them into something that they're not. You're trying to take that fantasy that you love so much and how you want them to be mm -hmm. and try to pull it into reality and say, hey, I want you to be this. And the person's like, that's not me. I ain't that way. And you gave a perfect example there of... Um somebody thinking to themselves that they go into they have this marriage and all this stuff going on in their head they're going to ask me to marry and they're going to go and do this and we're going to have the best of the best and mm -hmm. the guy hasn't even said we're in a relationship when you know i'm claiming you to be my woman um or however it would be said you know um but yet oh i've done it i've done it of course i've done it or i think Oh, if I just do this and if I just do that, then then he will then, you know, ask me to be his girlfriend or, you know, we will go and do something. you admitting that, though. Oh, no, I've done it. Well, look, um, I've got to be honest with you, man. Like, I've dated women where they wanted me to be like a Drake type. They pictured me like this super romantic, super loving, super like, you know, we all know Drake's very emotional not that there's anything wrong with that i'm not here to you know hate on him that's how he is you know we listen to his music he's he's that's how drake is you know he's very into his music very soft very sensual 
rose petals up the stairs, you know. Uh, Get like usher. In the bedroom. Exact, thank you. Yeah, he like an usher. Exactly. Yeah. He's like an usher. And I always try to tell them that ain't me. I'm like a 50 cent. That That's yeah. me. That they want the rock diamond side. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Uh, you're going to get the leader, problem solver. Um, you know, I'm still going to give you love and affection, but I'm not going to be like that deep into it. That's what I mean. You're going to get the leader, the problem solver, the provider, the understander. Um, you know, when things go sideways, I'm always going to try to put them back on track. That's what you're going to get with me. You know what I mean? And that's the thing. When you look at like 50s character, 50s cold. You're not yeah. going to see him out in the media like, oh, my girl, I'm loving all my girl. No, he's on his purpose. He's doing his thing. You know, he does what he needs to do to make what he needs to make happen. Uh, he has a girlfriend right now. And you can tell like he ain't in the media like, oh, like, oh, my girl and blah, blah, blah. Like you'll see photos of them getting ready or out to dinner and that's it. But he ain't all up in his feelings like an usher. But I've had women try to project that onto me because of the fantasies that they've fallen in love with of, oh, I'm looking for like an usher type dude or and I'm like, yo, that ain't me, man. Like you are not getting that from me. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? That what people expect from another person, I find that so interesting. Exactly. Well, it's like, for example, let's say, Anthea, you're a woman and let's say a guy's all like, oh. You know, I want like, I'm trying to think of somebody you know here, like a Jennifer Aniston from Friends, all mm. like soft and cuddly and all that. And, you know, just buckets of sunshine. Mm. And you met a guy and he tried to project that on you, but that's not you. Mm. See, I'm actually quite like that. I'm very, yeah. I'm, I'm on the loving side. I like the hugs, the cuddles, the kisses, yeah. the hand in hand. I like all of that. Um, and if my man's not doing that, and I said to him, you know, well, I don't really would, I don't think I'd want to say to him, if he's not naturally come, coming towards me that mm -hmm. way, then to me, that's a big red flag. And well, I'm I tried to give a better example of a woman that's more like that. And they've tried to project the image of like, hey, I want you to be like this. And you're kind of like. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm just like, no, 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 absolutely. I mean, there's. I'm trying to think of a scenario as well where a man would come to me and say, I want you to be, or, you know, why are you not doing this or that? I'm trying to think of something, but I've gone a bit blank on that. Yeah, uh, me too. I, me yeah. too. But, um, <laughs> <No way. laughs> but that's the thing, right? It, it, it really comes down to know who you're dealing with, how you're dealing with them, and also living in a base form reality, man. Like, again, sometimes, not all the time, you have to admit that this person might not just be for you yeah. because you were more in love with the mental wedding of painting a picture of how you wanted them to be instead of looking at the reality of how they actually are. Yeah. And that's how you break your own heart being in that space. So me, I always try to live in reality. I try not to live in fantasy la la land because again, you only get hurt living there. You'll, you'll live in this space where you're like, Oh man, if she comes back to me, like we're going to run off into the, the woods we're going to run off into and you're sitting there waiting for this girl to come back and she ain't never going to come back. No. And also I think, you know what, it's like changing the language towards somebody as well. If you're saying to somebody, why are you not hugging me? Why don't you ever hug me? Why this? Why that? How about you approach the person and say, you know what, I'd really appreciate and really like if you were to actually if we were to do a date night or if you was when we you know or if when we sit down you do give me hugs and cuddles and if they go oh i didn't even know that that's what you liked or I yeah didn't that's even context realize. though that's yeah. giving you context and that's yeah so so and then they start doing that then amazing um but i think if you're going to somebody and you're saying in the sense of why don't you i think that just with that aggressive puts, tone yeah yeah it puts it puts people's back up and they don't actually want to because of the way you're saying it and the words that you're using well, yeah, the, then you don't, don't want to show up for them at that point no you don't you don't you just i think everything is is how you say things as well and if they're still not doing it and you've come across and you've approached it in that way and that's not what they you don't try and change them come out of that fantasy land and know that that's not who they are they're not going to change that's who they have like if, if if my guy doesn't want to be hugging me at any time or he doesn't like he doesn't like the affection 
And I said to him, you know what, babe, I really enjoy, like, I love the affectionate side, blah, blah. And he just keeps on, he just does it once, let's say, and then he doesn't do it for the next three weeks. And I say to him again, you know, we've had that conversation and I don't even know if I would allow three weeks to go by. I wouldn't. I've slipped up in that area sometimes, like not that, but like specifically, like when someone makes a request, sometimes like, you know, I forget. Um, And I slipped up. So sometimes it's, as you said, I think me and you've spoken about this helpful reminders. Hey, babe. Yes. You remember, you know, I just like to be cuddled from time to time. And it's not that you can't do it as a man, but you also got to understand. And again, this is for women. If your man's cuddling and affectioning you all the time, when is he working on his purpose? Yeah, exactly. I think you've got to It needs to be balanced, man. Like he can't be doing that all the time. Like, he, he's got a purpose and that purpose is what's going to take care of you and him. Mm-hmm. But because if he's doing too much of that, then he's getting more in his feminine. And then you're going to be like, oh, I don't really want you to cuddle me no more. And mm-hmm. the women have been like, I don't really want you to cuddle me because it's like the man that she was like that masculine being embraced by that masculine energy. Now she's like, he's cuddling me all the time. He has too much time to cuddle me. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Why are you at home so much? What are you doing here the whole time? <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, yeah. So, it's, a, it's a balance again, isn't it? It comes back down to balance. Yeah, it's like when I'm here, I'm here. But then when I'm not, I'm out hustling. I'm doing my thing. Mm. Um, so, yeah, look, guys, this was a fantastic episode. I really like this one. I know in the beginning we went from one one to the left. But, you know, we get a lot of these things out for purpose, right, to help understand communication a lot better. Um, you know, I've been in, in, in relationships with some people where the communication was just off the chain. Like, and I mean, like in a sense of certain things didn't even have to just be telegraphed. It was just there. Mm. And there were some where it was like, no, it had to kind of be drilled in. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You just have to know who you're dealing with. But at the same time, you also got to live in reality, man. Like the paint, the picture that you paint in your mind, they might never be that. And you need to learn to accept that. And it's either can you accept that? And still love on them or accept that and move on and exit yeah. off the highway. I think that's the biggest thing there, isn't it? You either accept it and be happy with your with your yeah. decision and your choice or move on. Yeah, because, get off the highway. Exit yeah, off the highway. It gets boring as well, Michael, when people just want to, as in, and I don't mean that in a bad way, but like you're you're tiring the people around you as well by going on and on about the same thing, the same subject, and you're not doing anything about it. You're just not. And then you're expecting everybody to listen when you're not making any changes yourself. So I think you've got- I'm glad that you said that though, because again, it touches back in the point in the beginning. It's very difficult for men to voice how they feel. Men are starting to get there. Mm. And women are starting to see that what men are like, yo, I'm not dealing with this. They're starting to feel very comfortable walking away because mm. before men would, would not say anything and they would just stay and tolerate. And then the woman would leave. You know what I mean? But now men are starting to get comfortable and starting to say like, yo, is it, is the juice worth the squeeze? Hells no. I'm out. And it's not an insult towards women, but it's just understanding that men are starting to, to, to voice their opinions because men want to be heard just as much as women do. And that's the thing. I'm not saying that like, yes, there are some bad eggs in the apple or bad apples in the tree, just like there are with women. But you need to understand that if you love your man, he wants to be heard and not, I'm not talking about like you just, yeah, 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 yeah. But like he tells you something and you've like, listen, you're like, okay, this is what he needs. This is what he wants. He cares about me or like whatever. You can't just be dismissive and and, and only want it for, for your voice to be the loudest one in the room. Mm, that same goes both ways, doesn't it, again? Same yeah, thing. Yeah, because even yeah. me, I'll admit, I have an ego sometimes. I want my voice to be the loudest one in the room, and I'm working on that. I'm mm. learning sometimes to, to listen better because there's been relationships where I didn't have to speak as loud. The person just, like, respected me. I respected them. It just clicked. It but when you're learning somebody, it's different in that romantic context. So sometimes I I get a little bravado. I get a little pep in my step and I'm like, yo, like, you know, if you're telling me that I'm the head in the relationship, I'm kind of like, I get a little bit of an ego, but you can't have that. Mm, You have to let go of that ego. Absolutely. You got to step back a little bit and say, okay, like, you know, like we both need to be heard. But that's why I said both. 
Because if you're the only one being heard, and that's the thing, I don't like it when shaming language is used to, to berate somebody for them to agree with you. It's like, no, we're both going to come to this healthy space. We're both going to listen to each other, solve the problem and move forward. That's what it comes down to. It's not like, oh, so everything is your way. Don't give me that, uh, that, that, that attitude. I don't want that here. Because you'll hear that sometimes. Oh, it's always your way. No, I'm just trying to tell you how I feel. Mm. And I don't want to have to tell you how I feel without you trying to put me down or you trying to, um, you know, shame me for feeling that way. But again, that's an unhealthy relationship, isn't it, Michael? Mm. Because the fact that um, you're having to say that in the first place and the person's not listening or you're having to, or they're saying to you about how you feel and it's actually like, well, that's really unhealthy because actually you should both listen to one another and you should both feel like you've been heard. And if you're both not feeling like you've been heard, then there's a problem. Well, I think if the person loves you, they wouldn't shame you for you speaking no, about how you feel. They're not going to put you down and say like, oh, it's always your way. It's always No, they would listen. Yeah, of course they, they would. They would pump the brakes and say, they're trying to tell me something. And yeah. I've been, I've made the mistake, as I said, sometimes. I get heated and I don't listen, but that's what I'm trying to tell you guys. Sometimes it just takes a minute. And that's why I love what Anthea said in the beginning. If my, if my man hangs up the phone on me, I'm going to be a little pissed, but it's probably because he needed to get away from the situation because again, and women don't like to hear this. They're way more emotional than men and men cannot engage in the same levels of emotions as you can. We're not mm -hmm. built that way. We're no. built to fix problems. We're not built to engage in emotional warfare. So sometimes we need to step away and move and then come back to the situation and then talk, but not engage in this crazy, um, you know what I mean, um, mental warfare like Thor versus the Hulk. <laughs> can't do it. We just, we just can't do it. And it doesn't work either. It doesn't work. I think um, we all have to accept that a male has his role and a female has her role. And I think that's what it comes down to. Having and, and you know what? I, <laughs> and again, you know what? We'll, we'll ramble off a little bit. But I've been accused of that. You always come with your statistics. I'm a man. What else do you want me to come with? The emotion. The I, crying. I've been accused of that in like past relationships. You come with your statistics. Because one time, like, like, and this was like a while, like a relationship before I was having a, dis a, a dispute with somebody and they were like, because they said something, right? And I'm like, man, like, you know, like, women are, like, 80% emotional. You always come with your facts. I'm like, but if you own the fact that you're more overly emotional than a man, why would you get mad at that? No, you wouldn't. Because we are more emotional. That's just how we are. And women have a cycle going on that naturally makes them emotional. We yeah. It's actually, we can't do nothing about well, we can do something about it, but it's not a choice that we want to do to be able to get to that. So, but in in your natural being of being a woman, we are emotional. And if a man oh, can accept- not like that. She, she's well, like, you always give your facts. Like, well, if a man can accept that woman is emotional being more than a mental being, and a man and a woman can accept that a man is a mental being more than an emotional being, then we've got a good balance, and we've come thank with you. Stepping, thank we're you. stepping into a relationship on the right foot. Because she's not time. trying to make him emotional. No. And and women actually now are starting to lean more towards the logical sense because they're like, if I want a man. I have to understand what men want. I don't want yes. to, I don't want, because that's the thing. A lot of times women will tell men what they want instead of actually listening to what they want. Instead of saying mm. like, if I want a man to get on a knee, marry me, jump on a plane, whatever you want, what does he want from me? Mm. Does he want to be with me? Does he want to build a life with me? Does he want to, like, what does he want from me? Mm. Instead of telling men what they want, it's like, yo, come on now. And it's like the same thing. We as men can't tell women what they want. You know, we have to listen. But a lot of times within that, it's very misconstrued a lot of times. They'll tell you like multiple things. But it's like at the end of the day, you know, we want to try to keep it cordial. 
and and this is one thing, and Anthea can attest to this. I will never yell at you, and I will never like yell at somebody, or I will never use shaming language. Mm, that's very true. Anthea's known me for a long time. It's not a part of my character. Like I might get frustrated. We all do. It's normal. Yeah. But I'll never go to a place where I'll start putting you down, insulting no. you. Like I no. do. No. I'm just because I don't need to go there. It's like mm -hmm. if I love you, I don't need to go to that space. Mm. You know what, Michael? And it's so true because same with myself. If somebody can say a hundred things towards me that are negative, and I won't say a word because I'm not lowering myself to that. I'm just mm -hmm. not doing it. Yeah, you're Let not going to shame them though. Like if you love them, you're not going to be like, "Well, you're a piece of garbage because you no, don't cuddle me." Like, no, what the no. I'm just not going to do it. I just won't. I refuse to do it. I've had too many relationships where they, where they like load their gun and then do this like brrr, towards oh. me. <laughs> yeah, see, and I'm just. <laughs> see, you're like me though. I don't like that because when I have I a can't. conversation, let's say me and you have a problem, right? My man logical side is, let's say me and you squash it, right? We have a conversation. It's two hours, three hours, whatever. We squash it. I don't want to hear it come up again. No, but it wouldn't, no. It wouldn't because we've already squashed it. We've already had that conversation. No, but like you see, like some people, it will come up again. I personally, I'm like, yo, why are we having this discussion again? Like, why again. are you triggered by this when we've squashed it? Yeah. So why are we going over the same thing again? When we've done because this you already, feel like you have to walk on eggshells with that person because no matter what you say or do, it's never going to be enough. You're always going to feel like they're going to get triggered by something you're going to say or do. So it's mm -hmm. like for me, that's how I solve my problems as a man. What I do is, if we have a problem, we squash it and shouldn't come up again. I shouldn't be like, I shouldn't hear like, oh, like you know, you did this and I felt this way. Like, yes, you can feel that way, but I meant like that problem of you saying. Like what I did in the past should not come up in the present. Yeah. And when it does come up, you know, there's a problem if they keep bringing it up because they're not listening and it hasn't been squashed. So they might be. So actually, it's like being fake in a sense because you're saying yes and you're agreeing that it's being squashed. But when something occurs again, you bring it back up. So therefore, you actually, it's like a, it's actually, I don't want to say, is it strong to say a lie? It's not a lie in that it's moment. Not a lie. No. It's like, I'm going to go back to what you said. It's loading the gun. That's it's loading what you're the gun doing. again. Yeah. In that conversation, you guys have moved forward, but mm. you're, you're just kind of waiting for them to drop the ball. Mm. As you said, like, oh, they're going to drop the ball at some point, And I have my bullet when they do. Yeah. That's exactly. I have my bullet when they drop the gun. I refuse to deal with people who load their gun, Michael. I refuse to deal like with them. That. Yeah, I won't have it. Um, look, at the end of the day, that kind of judgment, keep it to yourself. Go look in the mirror and go and deal with yourself. Don't come to like me. Um, but guys, we went over the time. But again, we always have great conversations here. <laughs> it's um, always good. Friday, we actually have Should You Take an X Back. Mm -hmm. so I'm, I'm actually going to post that one on IG because I'm sure some people are going to want to be like Ooh. definitely not with a loaded gun you should take your ex back that's for sure <laughs> <laughs> yeah that too you fresh new slate at that point uh, yes. <laughs> but yeah we're going to talk about it on Friday because some people it happens you yeah. heard some people break up and they got back together and it worked and it worked and other ones it didn't. And other ones it didn't. So we're going to have that discussion on Friday. Yeah. Um, so that's why they said we'll talk on Friday. Thank you, guys. As I said, like, share, subscribe. We give you guys the option. And uh, we'll talk soon. Take care, everyone.